a radical in maths represents the root of a number the most common of these radicals are square root cube root and fourth root in general we can write nth root of a number like this in radicals the number or the expression which is inside the radical symbol is called as the radicand the root symbol is also called as the radical sign and if there's a number outside this symbol that number is called as the index now let's understand that radicals and exponents are closely related in fact we can express radicals as exponents for example square root of a can be expressed as an exponent as a to the power of 1 by 2 in the same way we can express cube root of a as a to the power of 1 by 3 fourth root of a will become a to the power of 1 by 4 so in general nth root of a can be expressed as a to the power of 1 by n let's remember that the power of the exponent will be the reciprocal of the index in the radical expression now just like we have laws of exponents we also have the laws of radicals which can be seen as an extension of the exponent laws so let's get started with the first law of radicals which is the product law we know that in exponents we have a to the power of n into b to the power of n is equal to a into b the whole raised to n now if we replace n with 1 by n we have a to the power of 1 by n into b to the power of 1 by n is equal to ab whole raised to 1 by n these are nothing but radicals so this statement can also be written as nth root of a into nth root of b is equal to nth root of ab so this is our first law of radicals now let's move on to another law of exponents a to the power of n by b to the power of n is equal to a by b whole raised to n here if we replace n with 1 by n what we get is a raised to 1 by n by b raised to 1 by n is equal to a by b whole to the power of 
1 by n. This statement can be expressed using radicals as nth root of a by nth root of b is equal to nth root of a by b. Now this becomes our second law of radicals. Moving on from exponents we know that a to the power of m the whole raised to n becomes a to the power of m into n. Now listen carefully. Since multiplication is commutative, this term can also be written as a to the power of n into m which becomes a to the power of n the whole raised to m. Next step, as usual, let's replace n with 1 by n and m with 1 by m. What we get is a to the power of 1 by m the whole raised to 1 by n is equal to a to the power of 1 by m into 1 by n. This becomes equal to a to the power of 1 by n into 1 by m and that is equal to a to the power of 1 by n the whole raised to 1 by m. Here let's note that the exponents are reversed. Next, let us try and express the same statement using radicals. a to the power of 1 by m is mth root of a. Here we have another exponent 1 by n. So we'll put in another radical nth root here. This term can be called as nested radicals. The next terms a to the power of 1 by m into 1 by n and the following term they both can be expressed as a to the power of 1 by mn which is nothing but m into nth root of a. Coming to the final term a to the power of 1 by n is nth root of a. When you have a whole raised to 1 by m that becomes mth root of nth root of a. So in our third law we have nested radicals where you can change the order of the radicals without changing the radicand. With that we move on to the final law. From the laws of exponents we know that a to the power of m the whole raised to n is a to the power of m into n. Now let's keep the m as it is and the n will be changed to 1 by n. What results 
is a to the power of m the whole raised to 1 by n. This becomes a to the power of m into 1 by n and that is equal to a to the power of m by n. Now let's use radicals. Here we keep the a raised to m as it is and the exponent 1 by n will become nth root. So what we get is nth root of a to the power of m. This is equal to a to the power of m by n which is our final law of radicals. If you found this video useful, give it a like and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.